In this lesson, we're going to take a look at another example of how neurons, when they're arranged in certain ways, can do some useful computations. In this case, we'll look at how uh, brains can determine the location of a sound in space. To begin, consider this person here just looking forward. And of course, we have two ears, a left ear and a right ear. And if the sound happens to be directly in front of us, the sound waves, right, those vibrations in air, will be detected by both ears simultaneously. Now notice, if the sound is at an angle from our direction, the head position here, if the sound is off to the left here a little bit, uh, the sound waves are going to strike the left ear before they strike the right ear. And so when researchers thought about how brains might compute the location of sound in space, they thought this might be one possible mechanism. Perhaps the brain is, com is measuring or detecting the delay in activity of the two auditory receptors in the ears here. And that delay would then be correlated to the position of the sound in space. So imagine the sound source goes all the way over here, 90 degrees from the direction of gaze of the person. In this case, the sound will hit the left ear first and the right ear second, but the delay will be maximum when the sound is over here. There'll be a little less delay when it's here. There'll be zero delay when the sound is directly in front of the person. So the magnitude of the delay in the activation of the auditory pathways for the left and the right, the magnitude of that delay, how big is that delay, is correlated to the position of the sound in space. So in principle, then it was possible that maybe what brains are doing is somehow detecting the delay. Well, how would that happen? So to begin the investigation, then you want to find places in the brain where the right ear information and left ear information are converging. If you're going to if you're going to detect a delay in activity, um, you'll, you'll need to be comparing the activation in both those ears. So they wanted to find a place in the auditory pathway where left and right ear uh, information was converging in some place in the brain. And here we see a diagram of, of precisely uh, where that location is. So here we have um, the right ear over here. Now, inside the inner ear are hair cells, and these are the sensory cells that convert vibrations into electrical signals. The eighth nerve would be the auditory nerve. And so action potentials will race down here into the cochlear nucleus, and then these cochlear nuclear cells are going to send axons down here to this structure called the superior olivary nucleus. Now, interestingly, this is the first place, then, where information from both ears converges, because here's the, the hair cells in the inner ear of the left ear, and they're going to respond to vibrations, and they'll send action potentials, and they will converge in this uh, olivary nucleus. So researchers were interested in determining uh, how the, the neurons in the superior olivary nucleus were arranged. Perhaps they're arranged in a way that can detect a delay in the activity between the right ear and the left ear. You'll recall, if the sound is directly in front of the person, the two hair cells here, left and right, will be activated simultaneously. If the sound is off to the left here, the left ear will be activated, then the right ear, and that will be a maximum delay when the sound is on either side, 90 degrees, from the person's uh, line of sight. So let's take a look at how the neurons were arranged in the superior olivary nucleus. And this research was, well, a lot of it was done on birds, uh, birds of prey, who it's obviously useful to be able to localize sound in space because their food would make sound, and then they can find their food. So this is what they found in the superior olivary nucleus. They found a, a pattern of wiring that looked like this. Here's the right cochlear nerve, so that's this one coming in here. Here's the left cochlear nerve. That's this one coming in here. And the green cells would be the superior olivary nucleus cells. A nucleus is just a cluster of neurons. So the superior olivary nuclear cells are the green ones here. One, two, three, four, five. Now notice each neuron, or each uh, axon that comes in to the system is branching, right? So if action potentials are going to come down this axon, action potentials will split. Action potentials will go down here, and the same frequency of action potentials will go down here and again split. And so action potentials are going to arrive at each of these terminals, but of course in the left nerve, action potentials will arrive at cell 1 first, and it'll take some time to get to cell 2, take a little more time to get to cell 3, take a little more time cell 4, and finally cell 5. The same principle applies for the right nerve.
Now we'll make an assumption in the system that action potentials travel at the same speed. And again, we're going to make the assumption that the target cells here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, only respond when both of their inputs are simultaneously active. So again, spatial summation. Now with those two uh, assumptions then, um, it became clear how this system can actually compute the delay of activation between the two auditory nerves. So to see how this works, let's take the case of the sound coming from directly in front of the person. You'll recall in our other diagram here, when the sound is in front, both ears are uh, activated uh, simultaneously, so there will be zero delay. So under conditions of zero, zero delay, let's see which of these neurons will be activated. Well, if the sound comes from the front, both the left and the right will be activated simultaneously. So action potentials will uh, begin at the same time. Let's take the left first. So for the left side here, the action potentials will reach uh, cell number one. But by the time they reach cell number one, the action potentials over here uh, have not even begun to get close to cell number one. They're only at the beginning stage of the process here, right? So in the time it takes action potentials from the left nerve to get to cell number one, the action potentials in the right nerve have only reached cell number five. And so the, I so the idea is, is that because only one of the inputs for cell number one was activated, cell number one will not respond because it doesn't have uh, the second input. It hasn't had time. The action potentials didn't have time enough to get all the way down here uh, in the right nerve. So because the action potentials only uh, activate one of the inputs and not both, this cell does not fire. Neither does cell number five respond because it's only receiving input from uh, the right cochlear nerve. The left action potentials, the action potentials in the left cochlear nerve haven't had time to get all the way down to cell five. Well, if we just wait a little bit uh, longer, the action, action potentials in the left will reach cell 2. The action potentials in the right will reach cell 4. If we wait a little longer, the action potentials uh, in the left will reach cell 3. At the same time, the action, action potentials in the right reach cell 3. It's cell 3, then, that will get simultaneous activity in both of its inputs, sufficient to drive the target cell. So enough sodium you know, gets into the cell, and that cell will generate its own action potential. And the idea is then the output of this system would go to, say, some motor neurons that would orient your head in the direction uh, where the sound is coming from. So in this case, this motor, let's call this a motor neuron, would um, keep you facing forward, right, where the sound came from. Now, uh, when the both arrive at cell 3 at the same time, that's not the end of the process. Remember, the action potentials keep on going down to cell 2 for the right pathway, and for the left pathway, keep on going down to cell 4 and then cell 5. But remember, none of those cells will fire either because only one input is uh, active, and you need both for the target cell to fire. So when the sound is uh, directly in front, cell number 3 will get coincident activity, will get simultaneous activity in the inputs. And if that cell's output is hooked up to the motor system, uh, it will uh, direct your head, right, uh, your, your direction of gaze and your head uh, towards uh, uh, the sound, which would be directly in front. Now let's take a, a look at, at the other interesting example. Let's say the sound comes from 90 degrees from the right, right, and that would be a case of maximum delay. So the sound's going to strike the right ear action potentials will get a head start in the right nerve, there will be some time delay, then the sound reaches the left ear, and the action potentials here are delayed a little bit, right? And so the idea is, this being the maximum delay, then the right ear action potentials will have the maximum head start, and they will get all the way down to cell 1 by the time the left ear's delayed action potentials get to cell 1. So cell number one will get simultaneous activity in the two pathways, in the two inputs, when the sound is 90 degrees to the right. And the idea then is cell number one would activate a motor neuron that would turn your head 90 degrees to the right to localize the sound, right, or to respond to the sound that the system has already localized here. Uh, likewise, if the sound came from the left, the left ear gets the head start, and those action potentials can go all the way down here by the time the right ear action potentials reach cell 5.
Now again, right, so in, in that situation, cell 5 is going to uh, represent that the sound is way over here to the left, 90 degrees to the left, and the motor neuron will maybe, m you know, make your head turn to the, to the left to see it. But that doesn't end the action potentials, right, just because that cell fires. They keep on going down here, but none of these cells will get simultaneous activity in both of their inputs, so they will not fire. Only cell 5 in that case. So, in summary, when the when the sound is uh, directly in front, cell number three will get simultaneous activity only, right? And it so in a sense, the activity here uh, in this system represents that the position of the sound is directly in front. If the uh, sound were 90 degrees to the right, cell number one would get a simultaneous activity. So activity in this cell represents the location of sound 90 degrees to the right. If the sound came from the directly 90 degrees to the left, cell number 5 gets simultaneous activity. So activity in cell number 5 represents the location of sound is 90 degrees to the left. So in this way, sometimes these are called delay lines or coincidence detectors. These delay lines, then the, again, the way the neurons are arranged can do some useful computing. What the system is doing is measuring, in a sense, the delay that occurs when a sound is at a certain location in space. So our auditory pathway is arranged in such a way that certain re uh, places in the auditory pathway get information from both ears, and in particular the superior olivary nucleus, and that uh, system is uh, wired up in such a way that these cells uh, can, in a sense, represent the delay of activity of the two auditory pathways, and that delay is correlated to the location of the sound in space. Here we see a nice summary diagram of this uh, when the sound from the purple speaker right directly in front, it's going to be the purple cell that will be activated, right? So sound will hit the two ears simultaneously, and so only the middle cell will be the one that gets simultaneous uh, activity from both inputs. If the sound comes from the right, the red one here, you're going to get maximum delay and the right ear will respond first, then the left. And so the right ear ones have, have um, a head start, right? And uh, the left ear ones will be delayed, and consequently it'll be this uh, red cell here that will be active when the cell comes from the right. And on the other hand, if it came from the blue speaker here, maximum delay on the other side, the left ear gets the head start, so those action potentials will race all the way down here and get to the blue cell uh, at the same time as the action potentials uh, from the right ear uh, get there as well.